Welcome back to the next video in our minor dwelling series. This topic is going to be on pitfalls, um, things that can go wrong with minor dwellings and things that we've seen that could potentially happen during our 10-12 years. Um, Dave, first pitfall? The first pitfall is failure to obtain building or resource consent for your minor dwelling. We've seen so many people try to do it themselves or use a, an unskilled garage company that just can't get it and this is really really tough there's so many things to think about things like height in relation to boundaries floodplains geotech reports contaminated sites uh, retaining walls against the boundary parking turning circles just to name a few yeah. and we've seen so many yeah. so it's really critical because to have a successful project you're obviously going to need permission from council to do it that means obtaining a building and resource consent yeah. And sometimes we've seen that people buy a house, try to get my uh, resource consent and can't get it. It's a real shame. Absolutely. What, what we also see is some clients with, or well, people um, without um, the experience going and finding out that the council say that yes, you can do a minor dwelling, but they don't explain to them the development costs to remove um, uh, earth is so expensive, the lengths of the driveways, you went to bridging over a um, drain, those that development that, costs. That, that, um, that it said I should have gone with you guys, you spent over $75,000 wasn't it on that? Yeah, the, the variables on a site can range from anything from a cheap site from sort of Fifteen to twenty-five thousand, yeah, yeah. all the way up to sixty to eighty, hundred thousand yeah, sometimes on the site. Absolutely. So it's really important to understand how much the the site's going to cost to develop. Exactly, yeah. because we just say those sites that are too expensive, they're not viable. They're too expensive, mm. and and the thing is, you don't know what you don't know, and that's mm. where our due diligence service is absolutely fantastic. We have a specialist finding service, so we make sure that you're not going to be buying a lemon like so many of our people try to do. To get advantage of this most powerful strategy in the market, you've got to uncover the rocks uh, there and find out if there are issues on the site, and that's what we do. So what we just got well, it'll be over half the site. Absolutely, it? yeah. We look at uh, we look at ten properties, and maybe five of them will be minor dwellingable and yeah. economically minor dwellingable, yes. and we'll get presented to our database. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, um, yeah. What, what what are some of the other things that you see as pitfalls? So quite often, lot, lot, just like you say, you don't know what you don't know. Um, we've seen in the past clients, uh, people get excited about going and doing a minor dwelling, coming to us with the property and saying, I've got a property, purchased a house, now can you do the minor dwelling on it? And unfortunately it's happened on a handful of times that unfortunately, no, they can't do a minor dwelling on the property because mm -hmm. it might be a floodplain or, a, or it, there's a numerous number of reasons the site is yeah. not developable. But because it's over 600 square metres, they thought that it was. Um, other scenarios I've seen, they've got advice from maybe a garage company where they've said, yes, you can do a minor dwelling on it. And again, um, either not being able to do a minor dwelling or um, just far too expensive to develop the site. Um, so the very next step that you guys that you need to take is contact us again for a 10 minute chat to see if minor dwellings is for you and your portfolio.